Hello Commanders, Commander Plater here back with another Elite Dangerous video and more importantly a breakdown of the latest dev diary taking a look at station interiors and what we can expect from them. Again, important things to consider here before we go any further is everything we are seeing is pre-alpha footage and could be subject to change, improvements or general tweaks. So, the first thing we should note from the dev diary is we're going to have a lounge to watch ships come in through the mail slot, which gives us a good idea of some of the visuals we'll be expecting in Odyssey. Now, I will mention here this does look like a bit of an upgrade from existing visuals in Elite, but with pre-rendered footage you can never be certain. Within the station we get to see some NPCs sitting around, and just interacting with each other. Now, the question is how dynamic these are going to be. Will they always be in one spot? Will they get up, walk around, go and talk to other people? Will I see the same NPCs sitting around? that you see, or will that vary from gameplay mode to gameplay mode? There's been a lot of talk about the different Remlock suits we're going to be able to have, but what we now know is we're going to choose a base suit around your chosen gameplay activity, with each suit being geared towards a particular activity. We get a look at a combat suit which I get some serious Darth Vader vibes from here. What I am going to mention though is it also looks a lot like another armour set from another space game that we don't really talk about here. There was talk of scavenging through wrecks, which sounds like it could be new gameplay. Will we be able to salvage data that offers more than just a small bit of text as a background story reward? Will there be credits involved? Will there be data involved? I have to wait and find out. We see a signpost, which likely gives away more than you would think. With Apex Interstellar Transport listed, the Lounge Pilots Bar, Pioneer Supplies, Frontline Solutions, Inter Astra, and Vista Genomics all listed. So, Apex Interstellar is going to be a system where players can move around the galaxy on book transport for a small, well, affordable fee. The term within jump range is used, but how is the jump range going to be worked out? Some Anacondas have got 70 light years, some of us have a carry that goes 500, some of us only have a sidewinder that goes 10. The Lounge Pilots Bar. This thing really does sound like the player social hubs we were initially told about that would be an odyssey. So is it going to be a place where you can just simply go in, sit down, grab a drink with friends, move around? Is there going to be any gameplay activities around it or is it just going to be a pretty setting? Pioneer Supplies. This looks to be all the good stuff. So this looks to be a weapon store where you're going to be able to buy your equipment and weapons in order to take part in that first person gameplay. The weapons look your classical futuristic fare, ranging from rifles to handguns and also what looks like a shotgun option. But no really heavy stuff. Where are the shoulder mounted railguns for one shotting SRVs in ground combat? That's what I want to see. Now Frontline Solutions sounds like a place where the mission board's going to be. I could be wrong, but I really do feel like this makes sense, as frontline solutions could be on the front line is where you're doing missions and you're the solution. I guess we're going to have to wait and see on that one. Now, Inter Astra is a place where exploration data is probably going to be sold and salvage missions could be handed in. Again, this is all speculation, but an informed guess is always an informed guess. Finally, we have Vista Genomics. Now, knowing we're going to be able to sample and sell biological life form data from planets, really points me towards this being the home of the xenobiology profession. Again, this is going to be a wait and see, so as we see more footage and hopefully some gameplay, we'll have a better idea of exactly what Vista Genomics and what all the other signs could really be relating to. Mission boards will be available in stations as well as mission givers. The term mission givers really alludes to NPCs giving missions, which really could make the galaxy feel a lot more alive. We also get to have a quick look at what the terminals look like that we might be using, and they seem to be moving further towards the style of the fleet carrier interface. I will say I wasn't a huge fan of the fleet carrier UI when it was introduced. This is because going from the ship AI, it looks very, very blocky. And I do feel though it does make more sense from a ground based approach that a touchscreen would look a little bit more like that. We get told players are going to be able to disembark at outposts, planet ports, and spaceports. We also find out that we're going to have these new settlements we can disembark at as well, which are described as a Wild West Frontier type place on the edge of humanity. We get to see a settlement named Aster's Hope 2, with a commander walking towards it. You can see in the background there are a few assets including an NPC standing behind a barricade, more human sized outpost weaponry. So maybe first person murder sprees will be a little bit more difficult than first expected. We also see an NPC brandishing a rifle, then a pair of commanders walk through what looks like an airlock, which isn't really being used properly, which is likely for cinematic reasons. NPCs are going to be fully modelled and animated. We will also be able to interact with them, buildings are going to have a different sound based on their function, settlements will hopefully sound alive. 
The sound design for Elite has always been spot on, so I'm really hoping this is going to continue into Odyssey, and to be honest I have no reason to think it won't. NPCs are also going to be generated using the background simulation. That means Federal Stations will have Federal characters, Imperial will have Imperial. The big question for me, as a BGS player, is what's going to happen when a new faction takes over? Will they all suddenly change uniforms? Will that happen on server tick? It could be a fun time for those that do play the background simulation, and again this is a wait and find out. We also find out that the primary credit earnings in Odyssey will be through missions, so no big surface mining. We also find out that theft from stations will be possible, and we can also do exploring for bio samples as we already had an idea we would be able to. I'm always nervous of the phrase player created gameplay, as this often means there won't be as in-depth content as there could possibly be. That said, the focus does seem to be very strongly placed on players having freedom to be able to play as they wish. Overall, I do think it's been a really interesting dev diary. Again, quick, punchy and full of some really interesting information. I will comment one thing, and that seems to be lacking, is any early gameplay. Maybe some gunfire, what a base raid would look like. Now I'm sure all this will come in time, but I can't help but want to see everything right now. Well, over to you commanders, let me know your thoughts on the dev diary in the comment section. So thank you for watching commanders, please make sure you do like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you get an alert every time I put a new video out. Also whilst you're there, if you're looking to support the channel, please check out the links in the video description as there are a couple of different ways to do so. But once again, thank you for watching. Commander Plater, out.